at Kalabiba, at Rajis the DJ, and now we are about to introduce our first guest. I'm at Aji Simon. Sindo, no? No? Okay, let's just find out how it's going to go. Good morning. Good morning to you. We are extra hype, I'm so sorry. Maybe let's go to play. It's fine. It's okay. It's it's <laughs> Have you ever been on a show like this, though? Uh, not one so hype, no. Ah! I'm going to high five, but I'm not going to high five. I'm going to high five. So, high five, do Yes. Please introduce yourself to the people. Um, my name is Nema mm -hmm. Bagamuhunda. I'm a performing artist, writer, and producer. Whoa. Yes. You wear a lot of things. You wear very many hats. Yes. Do you have a favorite? Like, do you um, prefer producing more than you like writing? A favorite? No, it depends on the, on the mood at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm in love with dancing. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm in love with writing. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm in love with production, logistics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on the mood, the moment, and mm -hmm. also the task and the team involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a dancer here. He's just, he's just been refusing to dance for us today. It's a Wisdom, wisdom. All right, uh, tell us about yourself first before we get to the project that has brought you here today. Oh, what would you like to know? <laughs> Everything. Uh, tell me how, you, which came first? Is it dancing? Is it producing? Is it ah, okay. So I trained as a performing artist. That's in theater, dance, and music. But um, I specialized in dance, or rather dance found me. How when you're training and then you're always picked for the dance projects by the professional choreographers. Mm -hmm. So I found myself in dance for a very long time. And then later on, um, I wanted to put my writings out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I started some small, small TV production for, mm -hmm. to, to, to serialize a book I'd written. And it went on for a bit. You wrote a book. Yeah. Uh -huh. but. Um, um, mostly, I'd say, most people know me as a dancer. Yeah, because when you write and when you produce, you're behind the scenes, mm. so people never get to see you. Mm -hmm. So if you ask anyone who's met me, most likely they'll be like, oh, Nema, the dancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Do you feel that kind of takes away from you a little bit? Like these other children of yours are not being seen, or you're not just Not really, huh? not really. I'm proud of all my kids. Mm -hmm. And I feel like dancers are usually looked down on, specifically because it's, it's dance. Mm -hmm. It's always like, is it just dance? Are you just a dancer? Mm -hmm. What do you really do for a living? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm happy to wear that hat even after like more than 20 years. I'm happy to still wear that hat and mm -hmm. say I'm still a dancer. You've been dancing 20 years? 20. You don't even look 20 years old. but 28 you've been years now. Almost 30 years. <laughs> Since you look great. My son is about to graduate. So son? Yes. Eh. That should tell you something. Eh. <laughs> Yes. When I grow up, I want to look like you. When I grow up, you should <laughs> dance. <laughs> ah, ah, that's the secret. Not really. It's also how do you say the team, the people mm -hmm. you are with. If you if you work in a in a job that you like, they say you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're always having fun. You're, if you keep doing this for the next twenty years, of course it will change form and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you enjoy what you're doing every day, mm -hmm. you'll stay young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Wait, find out now. Must could dance though. Don't stay young. <laughs> Tell me about Roundy Mwenda. Um, Roundy Mwenda was a project conceptualized by Tyrone Huggins and Jared Onyango. Mm -hmm. So I came in as a producer for that project and assistant choreographer. Um, the project was basically, um, it came out from a Commonwealth theme. Initially it was done in South Africa as well with the Lutando Arts Academy. I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm saying it right, but the main choreographer there is Luanda Sidibe mm -hmm. and Noma Sonto. And they came up with the idea of, of, of sort of tracking the, the British tra travel through the Commonwealth countries. And one common track was that every country that the British visited, they set up a railway system. So we, we based our story on mm -hmm. the rail, South Africa and Kenya. Mm -hmm. So eventually the project just remained in Kenya after the first year, which was 2021. So 2022, it was just in Kenya. And we tracked the railway from when it started in Mombasa all the way to when it left at uh, Port Victoria, which is now Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the journey they went through. That's why we called it Roundy Mwenda, because these guys came not knowing where they were going. And it was called the, the lunatic line, the, high, the, the, the train to nowhere, because this is African hinterland, where are you going to mm. find what? Mm -hmm. But they knew that there's good stuff in there, so they made a, a railway line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what basically the project was about. <clears throat> I, I, want to ask, I want to ask many things, but Please um, go ahead. I'm trying to form it. <laughs> is it about our history? Is, is it 
is it just curiosity, like what, what you just said, where was this line going? Are we celebrating the untold stories, or untold things that went on? Uh, yeah, we told the story, you know, all the stories that are out there from the European perspective, how they came, they conquered and everything. Mm -hmm. So we told the story from the African perspective, through the eyes of African people, through Mekatilili, through Koitalel Arab Samoei, who I'm sure you've heard of before. Mm. But some of us lose touch with that history. And how, the, 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 from the African perspective, basically, how the guys at the coast received it, how the guys in the Cumberland received it, with the stories of the man-eaters. And they got eaten by lions by there because they didn't listen to the Cumbers. Because the Wakamba were like, no, us guys were long-distance traders. This is a route we use. Mm. And these, were, these guys, the Muzungus, like me, I know better. I know the topography. I'm this educated. is how we go. Yeah. But they're going through the water, how do you say, the watering spots for mm. the lions and the cheetahs. That's how they got eaten. If they had followed the Wakamba route, or Ange Puliwa, mm. no, no. So they, they ignored the African knowledge and mm -hmm. history, and they did their own thing. But if you note in Kenya right now, all the towns, all the major towns you know, are along the old railway line, from mm. Mombasa all the way to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Some sprouted off the Kapengurias, the Thikas, and the Nanukis because of the railway. Mm -hmm. So Kenya, let's say, more than Kenya right now, is based off the railway line that mm -hmm. the British brought here. Eh. Yeah. Wow, so we're literally still on the... On our past. Our past has literally yes. dictated our future. Yeah. Of course, now the railway is more, uh, not so used so much. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, how do you say? Shopping centers are moving more towards the highway. But you will see it's a spread between the railway line and the highway. Always, every town mm -hmm. in Kenya. So, is if it will make sense? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Kupe High School was not just all right, all right. <laughs> I watched a video recently. Yes. And it, it, it slapped me a little bit. They, they said that, okay, they use Japan as an example. Mm -hmm. Jap Japan, or the Japanese people, they study in their language. Mm -hmm. Mathematics, you know, science, whatever <coughs> scope <coughs> of Nini. But it's always in Japanese. The only time they learn English, or they use English, is learning English. Mm -hmm. The Chinese, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Malaysians want to chizanga in and out with Bahasa Malayu. Mm -hmm. But Africans, we're the only ones who read, who study everything and learn in English. And the only time we read something that belongs to us in our language is something like the Bible. And it's been translated. Does it? Okay. That's oh. a, a question for another day. <laughs> like, why are, we, why are we like this? Why are we glorifying English so much? Um, there's a song by Fela Kuti, he's an old musician, I, know, I don't know if you know it, an African, a Chinese man has a Chinese name, an Indian man has an Indian name, whatever guy has a, his own name, but African man eh. is lost. Valentine. Yeah, mm. okay. Speaking from. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we are all victims, but I think it's the, um, the absolute, how do you say, trashing of African culture, beliefs, religion, for the Western mood. When, mm -hmm. when someone comes and tells you, my God is better than yours, my whatever it is that I bring to you, my culture is superior to yours. So basically, I, I think the early converts looked down mm -hmm. and to access any kind of service that would uh, help you to move on in life, to access medicine, you needed to be a member of a church. To access education, you needed wow. to be a member of a church. Mm -hmm. To access, basically, to be able to get into leadership, to get these white man jobs, you needed to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. And if you're an animist, if you're not converted, mm -hmm. then you are considered an, an other. So you lack access to these resources. So mm -hmm. I think that's also part of the reason. But some, not all countries have lost everything. For mm -hmm. instance, in Tanzania, they study in Swahili. Mm -hmm. At some point, it was a, a handicap. But mm -hmm. right now, you see Wanatupita. And they're still keeping their Swahili. And they're still keeping that sense of pride in mm -hmm. being Tanzanians. And I think that's something that a lot of us who lost our references have. We, have, we, have, we lack that pride. We feel inferior. Ukimwona mzungu, you feel inferior. Ukimwona mtu ambaya mevas mwantu kukuliko na feel inferior. But maybe you carry so much more mm. knowledge, history. I mean, what pains yeah. me is unenda, 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 I won't say like a, a government institution, just anywhere. Alafu upate mzungu na wewe, mnendea service. The mzungu will get better treatment than me. In your own country. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gone to live in another man's country? Do you know how hard it is? Hard. But if it's not a place where you're the same race, it's not very easy. And then to have it translated, now it's not even easy for me to be in my own country. Mm -hmm. Ah, where? <laughs> I was like, it's social freedom, it's funny, it's All right, so Rondi Munda was part of a bigger story. Yeah, yes. Tell me about that. Um, Rondi Munda was part of, how do you mean, a bigger story? 
now when you when it was attached to the British Council. Oh right, mm -hmm. um, the the project was supported by the British Council. Mm -hmm. um, that is in terms of they gave us resources to to do the project. They helped us. But the Rwanda was not just a dance show. We used um, uh, augmented reality, mm -hmm. which means we projected stuff on stage. We we put a, a snake that you could not see physically, but you could see it on a screen. So we, we sort of played with elements from history that we placed there. You could wow. see a sort of, um, when we were playing the old times, to look at to So mm -hmm. you could see the savanna. So it was a mix of dance and augmented reality. Um, this was enabled by the British Council because mm -hmm. they came in, provided us a, a, with their funds, enabled us to find the partner in the UK, who is Tyrone and um, Birmingham uh, Arts. Mm -hmm. And there was Judy Owen, and then there's Luanda in South Africa, and then there's Dance Into Space in Kenya. And all these three groups came together under the British Council to, to make this project happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the British Council has been very, very supportive. And in fact, they were supportive of the project going forward. It's just that as artists, you know, umeshikilia project kama tano sita. So hii moja ikifunga tu hivi umesha kimbia. So, but um, given the right circumstances, I believe it's a project that can go very far because mm -hmm. it's very educative. It's a project that can go to schools, mm -hmm. um, especially wow. the students who came to watch the performance, they were really impressed. They learned a lot. They mm -hmm. learned a lot about Koitalel, about Mekatilili, about the route of the train, mm -hmm. about how the train came about, about how Africans feel about it. And also at the, end, at the tail end of the show, we had a sort of utopia segment where we want Africa to be. Where do we want Africa to be? I think we want our systems to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to be able to do a show like this and you know, when I live here, I, I don't have problems that are associated with me not having a good job or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be able to go to your house, to be able to drive on the street with no one stoning you or trying to rob you. Mm -hmm. We want our system to work, basically. We want to be able to be proud of who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be in a space where we are comfortable. Without as a leader, yeah. as a doctor, as a dancer, as whatever it is that you choose to be, but the system can make it happen for you. You've, you've said being proud and dancer, again, why you wear that hat so proudly. I remember when I was growing up, when I was coming of age to go to tertiary education. And I didn't know what to do. I grew up either wanting to be a lawyer or a doctor. Mm -hmm. But why? Because lawyers, doctors, engineers are the most respectable people in society. Not an actor. <laughs> that was not even an option. I think it's a mindset. Yeah, it's terrible. It's really it's terrible. It's because terrible. not everyone, you see all those things you mentioned there. Mm. It, okay, one is arts based, but they're like doctors and engineers. Not everyone has a science mind. Mm. Not everyone has that mind of holding all these things inside their mind. Some people are very good artisans. Mm -hmm. They can produce very good woodwork, like mm -hmm. what we see here. They mm -hmm. can produce very good uh, metal work. They can produce good cameras. Not everyone has that mind. And we should be able to accommodate everybody in their own skill. Yeah. But now, uh, artisan, because I'm in a cat chafu. So no one wants to be part But it is that. necessary. Can that doctor work without the stethoscope? Can our DJ play without a DJ book? Exactly. <laughs> so we need every... Even this studio, it's nice and clean and airy. Mm -hmm. Someone made it like this. Mm -hmm. And that person is equally important as the engineer who's running this operation. Mm -hmm. Who's equally important as the CEO who's making sure the whole operation is going on. So we should all be equally important. Mm -hmm. We all have our role to play in the society. It's not like Animal Farm. All animals are important, but some are more, more important, important than, than others. others. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Your yeah. set book, I think, is the one that I yeah. will take with me forever. It, it yeah. made me very happy. Thank you, my high school teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so mm -hmm. let me ask you what we're asking, the, the question of the day, rather. Mm -hmm. If you were in charge of, you know, taxing, giving or taking away tax mm -hmm. on certain commodities, mm -hmm. what would you heavily tax and what would you remove? I would heavily tax luxury goods. Like what? Like... Uh, <laughs> just my makeup. I think I would heavily tax luxury goods because that's luxury. I would take away tax from uh, from things like medicines, um, uh, hygiene products, feminine hygiene products, um, essential things, things that you cannot do without. Reduce mm -hmm. the tax on foods. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. For instance, if I want to, to I, I take away the tax on, on housing, for instance. Mm. There's, there's, there's taxes, you can, the people need mm -hmm. things and the things we want. Mm -hmm. So for the things we want, the tax should be higher. For the things we need, the tax should be lower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Na poko housing, ebo shout. Na health, and it's okay, and it's safe, and it's health also. I've just been shooting. Education, health, shelter, you know, the basic needs. Reduce the tax. 
things to say. And yeah. the government has just announced things also about education, talking about the the okay, do you think this is this is just me asking, please I'm still shouting him too, but now that we've we've gotten here yeah. <laughs> to this part of the conversation. I was watching the news, the government has decided that they've um, broken down the needy into four. Ranging from the most needy to the least needy. Mm -hmm. So education, <coughs> the bursaries, in quotes, will be given to heavily concentrate on the most needy. Mm -hmm. You think that's fair? To first of all break them and say, because Kitambo there was a different system, but now it's been scrapped off, and now people have been, you know, you know, um. A lot, okay, there's needy and I think that's right. I think it's right because yeah. if you have some resources, some people do well because they have the resources. Some people do badly because they lack the resources. Mm -hmm. For instance, you cannot compare a child who's constantly moving from bandits in West Pokot, where mm. Akisit, his class eight. Mm -hmm. You cannot compare him to a child who's in Kilimani Junior Academy. Yeah, na dropiwa, na pikiwa, akienda kwa labu kila kitu hiko. Uyu mingina atapengina jai on a laptop, na ndiwa na ulizua, what is, how do you send email? You get? So it's, it's very unbalanced. So mm -hmm. I, I, I do agree that the most needy should get the help, mm -hmm. as opposed to, how do you say, the one who has done very well. Because doing very well is also dependent on what access you have to resources. Mm -hmm. But it has to be a balance between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that we're on schools, last question because we had a very <laughs> heated debate just <coughs> last week on Excuse set. Me. We're talking about corporal punishment. Mm -hmm. Is it an African thing? Because no. um, um, so why is it necessary? Why do I have to go to school feeling like I'm going to war? Are you preparing me for something? Um, I think everyone is traumatized. Everyone, is, everyone is dealing with their own demons. <laughs> At the same time. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing mm -hmm. because children, I, I don't want to say nowadays because mm -hmm. kids are just kids. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what you expose them to mm -hmm. and, and what you allow them to do. But then we also have different personalities. So there has to be, a, I don't really, I don't agree at all with corporal punishment. Hakuna mtu ni mawe hatasikia. Na huyu ambaye hatasikia, ukimpatia adhabu ambayo itamumiza yeye. Mm. The, the problem is we punish according to what we think, not mm -hmm. according to what, for instance, like right nowadays, if I want to punish my, my daughter, I will take away her gadgets. That is punishment. She's a dunia imeisha. So if I threaten to take away a gadget, that is punishment. Mm -hmm. But 10 years ago, maybe I would have done something else, like clean the house or do something. Mm. Like that's your punishment the whole month. You're the one who's cleaning the house for us or something like that. And then it also varies on culture. Mm -hmm. Kuna cultures ambazo pengine mimi kama mwanamke siwezi kuchapa boya above a certain age. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. A man cannot beat a woman, who's such a girl who's starting to show like, like a woman. Mm. It's very tricky, but I don't agree with corporal, corporal punishment. Mm. But the punishment is a punishment. Because we have yeah. such random extreme cases. Juicy Street County, Flani, Mtu Mepigo had to go for reconstructive surgery for his genitalia. Mungine Street, I'm a Jakata, I'm a Cosair. Like in Kunama Cosair, and surely in a first surgery. Like in Shinda Sanders, of course, the CIA. Expulsion, Boana. You know, I quite crazy mean someone. I, I love to mob justice. Why? Yeah. I say mob justice because it was a group of teachers and staff members. Which is, which is also wrong. I mean, how do you able-bodied adults gang up on a child? On a child. What are you teaching this child? <laughs> Feelings. Also, you imagine pressure. Hey! pending? I know of a parent who slapped a teacher for slapping the child. Oh. Because, for instance, Menda Shule, Mambiwa, um, Amuna Vitabu, Wale Hawana Vitabu, Wendo Nyumbani. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can pick the most prominent looking person I can slap. Wow. Does a child buy books? Does she have any access to how, how these books come wow. to school? This child has no power mm. over. The only thing you can do is take her out of class. Asa mwalima miamua kupiga hui mtoto. Mzazi akakuja, na akachapa mwalimu, akamuliza, does this child buy books? I mean, you, if, if anyone is wrong for not buying books, it's, it's me. Yeah. It's not the child. So if you want to fight, fight me. And it almost became a fight, but the other teachers came in between. But somehow I agree with this parent because if the child has done something herself or himself, you can punish the child. Mm -hmm. But you don't take makosa mungine kama fees, kama sujushule haina nini nini kupanish mtoto.
All right. My last question. We're just going to take this. This. <laughs> so coming to just from children, mm. do you guys involve children in, in sana sana augmented reality? Because it sounds so it sounds fast expensive, but it sounds like such a beautiful experience, and it's not something Kenyans or Sisi Kama Wananchi were used to. Are children a part of the storytelling? Um, for Onyemwenda, we could not use children. Of course, children are part of the history, but, but we cannot use children because one, it's a commercial show, school, blah, 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 Sharia. Mm. But we had people who portrayed kids mm -hmm. in the show. So in terms of augmented reality, it is available in Kenya. It's mm. just that right now it's very expensive. Mm. So see, see, we tried to hack it using our own systems to manage kiasi kiasi kuna vitu zili fail peer. Mm. Um, but we need the resources. Kama tunyekua na more money, which is, okay, I'm not blaming the British Council, but we the way we planned, the money was not enough for mm. the augmented reality because we needed high-end gadgets, uh, projectors, whatever, mm. and it didn't really work out. But yes, anyone can use augmented reality. Kids, mm. most of the time you use it through a gadget, through a phone or something, but we try to put it live so by projecting it on a screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Mm. Do you have it like a show coming up that we have not talked about coming up soon or a, a performance? Yeah, I want to go. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Well, um, there are many shows coming up. Mm. There's a dance life festival coming up, I think, in June at the Gote Institute. Mm -hmm. There'll be many dancers there and dance films. We did a couple of dance films for them the last two years. Ile mwaka COVID, Uzuri wali keep going. So they asked dancers to send in dance films mm. to be shown as opposed to oh. doing live performances. Oh. Um, there's the national, there's the, how do you say, the, uh, the theater festival, which mm. will be the national theater later in the year. But at the same time, there's many things that come up in between. In between. Like for me, you can I want a show in three weeks. In three weeks, you'll have a show. But at least that's wow. my minimum working time. But I also have a piece with two dancers, two male dancers, Maulid and Brayo. Mm -hmm. And I itako tour Ivi Karibuni. It's still nameless, but it's more about the the current situation. Nataka sitaki, na penda sipendi. Yeah. You must have a nameless, so is it... Always Untitled. like that. Wait, yes, yes, I get. But is it is it always that you, you have an idea, then name it after, or do you start with the name and then have the idea? It really, it, it, it varies. Yeah. Sometimes the name comes first. Sometimes the idea comes first. Too many bambas yeah. are like, idea had is mature, but yeah. name bado. Uh, idea mature, to say my size piece for 15 minutes, mm. I want it to go up to like 35 minutes. Mm. Uh, so bado to nendele kuifanya kazi. I'd like to see you at, at work. I'd like to be a fly. On the wall. <laughs> yes, you... <laughs> She's so interesting. Yeah. All right, I just maybe give us any social media handle that you'd like us to to have. Whoa. So that, ah, whoa. <laughs> I just see what was the money. to kiendaga. But I'm on. Uh, oh, I'm not really active in social media. I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, Neema um, Bagamuhunda. I am on uh, Twitter. Mwanambali. Mm -hmm. I'm on B. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's it. How do you advertise your shows? If if you're telling us you have a tour. So so no na po. Wale wale ambao tunafanya kazi nao. Ndiyo. Sana sana huwa na hizo vitu. Unaona kama British Council. Unaona vile wale tuskuma. Paka sasa hizi niko hapa. <laughs> but personally I'm not a big social media person. But that's for a reason. Mm -hmm. I think first of all I'm old school. Mm -hmm. um, secondly it's it's over exposure. It's over exposure. I'm a behind the scenes person. So sipendi kumulikwa sana mm. and then the internet never forgets. Yes. So the day I become Famous, so to say, me come out what a receipts. School and it decide the pengine kanyaji kama ni lewe ya ni meji angu kia tao. Everyone will know about it. Mm. What a ni lewe peke angu katika la hasa angu please. Makona <laughs> na pome. Yeah, yeah. As in, anytime if I decide to, if if anything happens and I get angry at someone, it becomes a big deal. So I don't like that kind of exposure. You live a a private public life. Yes, I like that. Yeah. When I told you when I grew up, I wanted to be just like you. So yeah. If you show so tunatafuta watu wa nguvu kama for instance if, if my, my, my dance show I'll find the theater mm -hmm. the national theater I'll find the Gote Alliance Française all these different parties to push my agenda mm -hmm. not me mm -hmm. yeah mm. you're smart uh, any last words before I wrap it up um to everyone out there uh, performing arts is a career um, and if you work hard if you keep working and work hard it can pay off it, it, and it's a good career. Mtu aswahili kwambie una dance too. Una 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 act too. Mm -hmm. Because some of the changes in this world are brought about by artists, mm -hmm. poets, um, singers, musicians, revolutions, mm -hmm. Bobby Wine in Uganda, 
Professor Jay in Tanzania, whatever how do you say it, a politician. Mm. Same thing in Kenya. Some of these um, big politicians were one-time writers. Kivutha Kibwana is a big-time playwright. He writes mm -hmm. plays. He used to write plays mm -hmm. and uh, also act. Mm -hmm. So, wasani pia uleta change. Sakaja pia alikuwa msani. Yeah. Sakaja pia alikuwa msani. Exactly. used to be a gospel artist. Good morning, Sakaja. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so it's a career. But you need to work hard. You can't be laid back. Mm -hmm. Ama lanja. Arts is be having feelings and emotions. Arts be like, mm -mm. Mm. Si na wewe sai. you have to keep, baby, baby, baby. Ndwa kubali, okay, fine, okay, fine. Yeah, she's yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I personify arts like that. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so very much, Nema, for thank coming. Thank you for having me. That is, skubali kuulizo. Weni DJ tu? You ni kazi. Kama saizi TV, ngekua empty. Ah, ha, ha. Nalita TV, wuna ma response. Eh, tuende. Hashtag social Friday.